We begin this morning session with a talk on tact particles um, on single file motion by Sanjeev Sabapandit. Yeah, okay, thank you. This lecture. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, so this is about tact particle in single file motion. So this is a very old subject, and I think uh, I mean there are many experts in the audience who probably know uh, on this subject more than me, both on the subject and the history. So I'm I feel a bit. Uh, Nervous, but let me anyway uh, go about it. Okay, so we have some results here, and then basically I just want to show it, <coughs> share with you. Okay, so this work is uh, done in collaboration with uh, the student Saitra and Abhishek Dar, uh, who is here. And uh, but uh, this is basically a, a sequel of some previous work which was done uh, with Anjan Rai and this Anuttam Narayan, who was uh, here last week. <laughs> Uh, so many of you have uh, met him, yeah. Uh, so also I'd like to uh, thank uh, Kiran because, uh, so this is something we have been doing on this uh, Hamiltonian system and Kiran visited us uh, last year and so they were doing this single part uh, tech particle problem using this MFT and he was describing his work to us and then we realized that, uh, so basically we initiated the work after talking to Kiran, we realized that basically we can just dig out the result uh, using these formulas we already had. Okay, uh, so what is the problem? So let's assume a very narrow channel and there's a single particle and the motion of the particle is predominantly one dimensional. So I described the motion of this particle by its propagator. It says that given the particle at x at time zero, now what is the probability that it will be at y at time t? So this is given by the single particle propagator and I will assume that it has this scaling form. So it is, has some typical length scale, sigma t, and it has this scaling form and f is a symmetric function, okay? So for example, if it is a diffusive motion, so then this function is Gaussian and the sigma t goes like square root of t. But you can have a ballistic motion with a random initial velocities, so then the propagator is basically this function f is whatever the function you choose for the random initial velocities. And the sigma t goes like t, but it can be super diffusive, sub diffusive, and correspondingly sigma t will go in some power, power of t, right? So this is the single particle. So now I take the same channel and I put many particles. And the properties are that they cannot cross each other. These are hardcore particles, right? So then you can imagine that the, if I just look at the motion of one particle, the motion of that particle will be slow. That we all experience, for example, if I just come out of a movie theater, there are people in front of us, behind us, and our motion is, I mean, depends on the density, and if density is high, our individual motion becomes slow, right? So there's a slow motion for individual particle, and we want to know what are the characteristics of this slow motion, okay? So this single file motion, I think it was first, basically this term was coined by these people, Hodgkin and Keynes, so describe this potassium ion basically going through biological membrane, and they also had a mechanical model for this system. Uh, so this is the mechanical model, you have some balls and this is connected by a small channel and you just want to know how many particles are going through that channel, okay? So let me not go into this one. So now, so now I'm going to make a model for this system. So I'll just consider the system in one dimension. So it's a one dimensional system and I'll just replace these balls by point particles. So these are point particles and interaction is hardcore. So these are hardcore interaction point particle. So if and then I'll just tag one particle, let's say the particle in the red, and I want to know its motion. So what is known is that if I look at this motion of this particle, it's a hard point particle in one dimension. So this motion, the very, so it's a symmetric motion, so the mean will be zero. So the variance of this particle is related to the mod x of the free particle. If I just have one particle, so I just look at this object divided by the density. So this was, uh, I think, derived by Parkas. And then you can immediately see that if the motion is ballistic, then this object goes like T, so therefore this tag particle motion becomes diffusive. And this is a result by Jepsen, 
in it, and then if it is a diffusive motion, then typical x for a single particle goes like square root of t. So therefore, this variance for the tech particle goes like square root of t. So the tech particle becomes subdiffusive. So this is a result by Harris. And then after that, there are lots of other results for many other models. And while this result is very particular for this hard point guess, these results are in fact more general. Okay, these asymptotic behaviors. And one would expect that, okay, these are the variance and typical fluctuation would be Gaussian. So that's what one would expect. Okay, and there have been lots of theoretical studies and, uh, uh, okay, so I have basically put something, uh, uh, some representative studies on this subject and, okay, so many of these people are present in this audience. So I'll not go through this, each of these uh, uh, papers here. Okay. There are also uh, experimental studies and which basically look at this tech particle motion in experimental system and uh, okay, so there are some of these experimental studies. But all this, I mean most of these theoretical studies and this experiment as well as these experimental studies, so what they concentrate on this, this typical fluctuation, how does the typical fluctuation rule? So it's Gaussian but how does the variance grow for example as a function of time. Okay. But so what I am interested in asking is not the typical fluctuation, that we know that the typical fluctuation is Gaussian, but the atypical fluctuations. So the large fluctuations, right? So basically large deviation of this probability distribution for the tag particle. Uh, so let me just, so this slide is almost redundant for this audience, but let me just put it for just a half a minute. So we know that if I have a random work, let's consider on a lattice. So one knows this exact answer, it's a binomial distribution, but if I look at the typical fluctuation, it's basically given by Gaussian. But one can ask what is this large deviation form, like the, when the displacement becomes of order of the number of time steps. So it has this large deviation form, and for this example, this large deviation function is exactly given by that. So unlike the central reason where this central limit theorem says that it's a Gaussian, so this is a non-universal function. If I take a another distrib jump distribution, this function will be different, okay? And so this is for a single random work. So I want to ask the same question now, not for one object. So I have this many guys, and I'm just looking at one particle, looking at the trajectory of this particle. I know that typical fluctuations are Gaussian, but what is the atypical fluctuation? So how do I describe this atypical fluctuation? So let me, uh, before going to the result, uh, mention some previous studies related to this problem. So there's a paper by these people, they in fact write down this multi-particle, so you have n particles, so you just write down the multi-particle probability distribution function, and then basically integrate it out the rest of the particle just keeping one, so they have, in fact have a formula for this single particle form, tag particle. But okay, I find this procedure rather complicated and not very illuminating, but this is a subjective uh, one. You might find it, in fact, that's better than this one. And then there's a, another uh, study I have already mentioned by Kiran and collaborator, Kiran Tridiv and uh, Paul Kapersky. So they will actually, again, compute this uh, probability distribution using this macroscopic uh, fluxation theory. But then we all know that macroscopic fluxation theory only works for diffusive system. and for diffusive system hard point particle, basically they can compute this large deviation function, basically whatever we have. But with our approach, we can actually go beyond and not only the large deviation function, we can also get the prefactor uh, correction to this large deviation probability formula, basically. Okay, so let me just give you the result before I uh, go forward. So this is the result. So I have this single particle propagator. So single particle moves like this. And these are hard point particles. So what is the dynamics? So dynamics, if I just sit on a particle and if I see a particle coming towards me, so it's basically works like a reflecting boundary condition. So if it is diffusive, it's very easy to imagine, okay, what is a reflecting boundary condition? If it is a ballistic, it's again easy to imagine. But what I'm going to say that, okay, it's even valid for, it doesn't have to be only diffusive or only uh, ballistic, but it's valid for any propagator as long as I define what is what do I mean by reflecting boundary condition, right? So for example, if I can take a Levy work, right, which has a very long distance jump, but by reflecting boundary condition, I'll just uh, mean that if 
if I had this particle and it goes from somewhere to here in some given time t, and if I had a wall here, so then I will just reflect this point somewhere here. Right? So, this is basically the reflecting boundary condition for my Levy work and similarly any uh, like fractional Brownian motion or anything. So, this is why how I am going to define this reflection. Okay? So, once this reflection is defined then given this single particle propagator provided that this is symmetric and the mod of this W object exists as long as then the uh, tag particle distribution has this large deviation form. And this large deviation form is universal, it is given by this and where q is given by this integral. So, this is what I have written it here for future reference. Okay? So, this one for example, if you take a Gaussian distribution, this will have be some function, but that Gaussian distribution does not mean that it is a uh, diffusion. It can be diffusion, it can be just a ballasting motion with initial random velocity chosen from Gaussian distribution or it can be fractional uh, Brownian motion. So, only the sigma t will change. So, the all information about this dynamics is basically in the sigma t. Okay, so, this is the result and so for example, if I have a this Gaussian distribution, so this function is given by this and this is a plot. So, you can see that this, okay, this blue points are simulation. So, this dash black line is Gaussian distribution. So, this is an inverted parabola and this red line is a theoretical result. So, I will come back to this, there is a magenta line and red line, so I will come back to this difference between these two lines uh, later. But essentially basically this is the, this red line is a theoretical result and this is the uh, uh, Gaussian distribution and you see the theoretical result basically matches very well with simulation. Okay? So, so I am going to say that okay, this is basically the conceptually very easy to describe this problem and that is why I am maybe another 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes basically I am just going to give a derivation of this problem. How do you get this propagator? Okay? So, what is the first step? So, so, these are hard point particles, they reflect, but if I look at this, so these are some typical trajectories of these two particles for example, red is one and uh, blue is one. So, this is a picture when they just cross each other. So, there is no interaction and this is a picture basically they reflect each other. Okay. So, if I just remove the color from this picture, you will not be able to distinguish these two pictures. So, only way you can distinguish this picture because I have put these two colors here. So, in fact, this colors is the tag. So, this is one particle and this is one particle. In fact, I can go from one picture to the another picture whenever these two trajectories cross, I just switch the color. Right? So, that is the mapping from the non-interacting problem to the non-interacting problem. So, therefore, the interacting problem, I can forget about the interacting problem, I just look at the non-interacting problem. So, what is the non-interacting problem now? So, these are let us say five particles. So, they just move, they cross each other and finally, I want to construct the tag particle from this non-interacting picture. So, let us say three is the tag particle. So, what I will do, I just go here, they cross, so I just switch the tag. So, now the magenta becomes the tag particle. Now, they cross, so I switch the tag, now green becomes the tag particle and then where this one brown becomes the tag part or uh, and the blue becomes the tag part. So, every time there is two trajectory crosses basically I have to just exchange the tag. So, but now if I just interested in the two times properties, I do not even have to look at the full trajectories. So, I am interested in the dynamic, uh, where is this particle after time t. So, I look at this particle from the left 1, 2, 3, this is the third particle. I look at the final time and just count from the left, what, where is the third particle 1, 2, 3 and that is the third particle. So, so, this is another picture, okay, if it is a ballistic, okay, it looks, it is essentially the same basically, it's, I, for the ballistic motion these are the straight lines. Okay? So, now I have mapped this interacting particle to a non-interacting particle, in fact this mapping is not something new, this is, this has been done in fact by Jepsen and Harris, in fact is starting from that, so this is nothing new to this mapping. Okay. So, now what is, how I am going to solve this problem, so I initially consider a particle in a finite region. So, I just put this particle between minus n and plus l. I put 2 n particle, they are uniformly chosen with probability 1 over 2 l, basically each particle I put independently. I look at the middle particle, that is my tag particle and let them evolve independently each particle by the dynamics, by the propagator g basically I have mentioned. So, it is just one shot, it just goes from there to there at one shot. 
right? So, and this is unbounded. So initially, I just choose it from a uh, bounded uh, region, but then after that, it's unbounded. So I just let it go. And then I just count where is the middle particle. And that's all. And then I look at the where is the initial particle, what is the position, when is the middle particle at the final time, and this is my tech particle displacement. And I need to just look at the probability distribution of this object. In the limit, when I take n going to infinity, l going to infinity, keeping the ratio, which is the density fix. Okay, so, them, so when basically I just need to calculate the probabilities of this process and there are two uh, process, one is in this case, the particle which is the middle particle at the initial time, it may be the middle particle at the final time, these are non-interacting particles, or it might happen that okay, this middle particle goes somewhere there and some other particle comes and becomes the middle particle basically. Right? And if this happens, okay, there are four possibilities, okay, depending on which particle is on what side. Okay? But essentially, this joint distribution of this x and y is basically can be uh, divided into two parts. One is this picture and one is that picture. And then I have to just compute from there. And the clock is, uh, yeah. So now, so what is this probability distribution from this uh, process one? So I need to compute the dis displacement of the middle particle. So initially I choose the particle, the middle particle. What is the probability of finding that particle here? It's just the rho, that's the density. So what is the probability of this one? So that's just the propagator. And then I need to put something else, right? So this one is the probability that there are n particle on the left and n particle on the right at initial time, and also n particle on the left and n particle on the right at the final time given that there is a particle at x and there is a particle at y at initial and final times. So, so these two I know, essentially I have to basically compute this one. So I, once I compute this, I know the answer, I have the answer, okay? So similarly for process two, it's similar, so it's just, okay, I have to, uh, this is two particle I choose, so that is rho square, so then one particle goes from here to here, one particle goes from here, so there are two propagators. And then there's this probability which just again ensures that there are n particle on this side and n particle on this side on the initial time. And n particle on left of the red particle and n particle on the right of the n particle at the final time. So that's all. So this probability again I have to compute. So, so once you compute it turns out that, so it will have this large Davidson function, both process one and two will give you the same large Davidson function with different prefactors. And it turns out that this prefactor coming from the process one is of order one, and this is of order sigma t, so this is basically the dominant process, right? Uh, so, but, okay, this is slightly simpler to explain, and okay, once you understand how this one works, it's not very difficult to basically find out this one, so basically what I'm going to explain is this process. How do you compute this f for this one? Okay, so I want to compute this guy, and I want to compute this object, this probability f for this one, okay? So now, so I need to compute this. So this particle goes from x to y, so that's the particle. There are n particle on the left and n particle on the right. So what, what are these particles doing? So they are just independent particle. So the sum of this particle from this side will go to the left of y, so let's call it n1. Some will go from this side to that side, let's call it n2. Some will go from the right to left, that's call it N3, and some will go from here to here, that's call it N4. So this is what, and each particle, they just go independently. That's what, that's all it's happening, right? So now there are some constraints. Of course, the total number of particles is fixed, so that's just 2N. And now what happens, whenever a particle goes from the left to right, the tag of this particle basically decreases by one. And whenever a particle goes from right to left, this tag of this particle increases by one. So if it is the tag particle, I need to keep the tag fixed. So this N2 has to be equal to N4, right? And for this case, okay, since I have put equal number of particles on both sides, so also one can also see that this N1 has to be equal to N4. So these are these constraints. And correspond to each, each particle motion, there is some probabilities, right? So therefore I can write down this probabilities for this process, so this is this multinomial, number of ways of choosing this one. So this is the probability P minus minus is the probability that particle from the left of X goes to left of Y, 
and there are n one of them and these are independent they just multiply and sim simultaneously disguise and I just put this constraint by this Kronecker delta function and once you have this you can just use the integral representation of the Kronecker delta function and just put it there so this is what the answer you can just carry out this multinomial sum basically so I have to still tell you what is this p plus plus p minus minus but these are again not very difficult thing to find because this p minus plus is a probability that something from the left of x goes to right of y. So this is my single particle propagator. So initial position I just integrate from minus L to x and final position I go from y to uh, infinity and 1 over 2L is the basically uh, probability of initially choosing a particle. So similarly I can define this propagator. So once you have this propagator, we can go ahead and if you just use this form, you can actually go, go ahead and calculate these probabilities. So this is up to this leading order and one can actually show that all this other term basically doesn't contribute in the thermodynamic limit when you take L goes to infinity and L N goes to infinity with density fig. So this terms in the de uh, dots basically not going to contribute. So this is what I have and I put back everything and I get this probability. Similarly I do from the second one I put back everything and I get the answer and then finally putting everything together and integrating out this. So, so this is this was initially for this joint distribution x and y but now I write down in this variable which is one is the difference and one is this basically center of mass and once you write down that so I can integrate out this z bar and phi variable and what you have is the exact answer. So this is the exact answer for the distribution of the displacement of the tag particle uh, <coughs> position. Okay. Okay, one can in fact do the integration and write down in terms of some Bessel function, but okay, I like this uh, form better because okay, you can see some structure there. Okay, and where this is just given by that, and as I said that okay, this is from the process one, this is of order one, and that this is from process two, and it's of order basically rho sigma t, and these guys are given by this one. Okay, so once you have this is the exact answer, but then one can also go ahead and compute the large deviation form. So what we have to do is basically do this theta integral by saddle point. So once you do this theta integral by saddle point, so this is what you have. So this is a large deviation form and you also get this what is this prefactor and this prefactor is basically exactly given by that. Okay, this is the large deviation function which is given by this one. So this is the picture I have shown earlier. So this dashed line as I said, this is the Gaussian distribution. This red line is this formula keeping this prefactor basically and this magenta line is only keeping this large deviation form but if you only keep the large deviation form you will see that basically this line will go somewhere there so you keep the large deviation form but numerically normalize the large deviation probability basically so it's basically uh, so it's basically this form but there is a normalization constant which is basically the integral of this object you just numerically integrate this one. so you see that basically okay there is some deviation and one expect that as you take this sigma t larger and larger this magenta line and this red line basically they will uh, uh, basically merge to each other okay so this is the answer so one can in fact go ahead and compute cumulants and so because you have this large deviation form of this probabilities you can just put it there and just compute this object again doing a saddle point integration and this cumulant generating function is basically given by this parametric form and you can immediately say that this object once you write it in this way this rho and sigma t doesn't appear here so that means that because this mu is given by uh, defined by this one it means that the, since the left hand side doesn't depend on rho and sigma t, so somehow the rho and sigma t should go out from the right hand side. So therefore this cumulant generating function should be proportional to sigma t and it should go like 1 over rho to the power n minus 1, right? So this uh, different cumulant, n cumulant, right? So that you can immediately say and one can in fact go ahead and compute this cumulant and this is what is the Parker relation. In fact, the variance is, goes like this. This delta is in essentially this one. That's basically the uh, mod of the free particle, this thing. So this is this Parker relation, but one can expect go ahead and compute this thing for general f, general function f. So if you put a Gaussian, so okay, these are the result for if you just put a Gaussian distribution. 
Okay. So there's some comparison with numerics. Now, you have seen that this uh, large deviation function of a probability matches very nicely with the, uh, this thing, but simulation, okay. So if you look at the variance, okay, it's still good. So this uh, dashed lines are basically the analytical results. So variance is still good. Now you see that this other ones, as you increase the system site, it becomes closer and closer to dashed line. Uh, but even, yeah, so this is for the fourth, sixth cumulant, it goes in. But after some time it diverts, and this is basically the boundary effect, because you are looking at a finite system, and if you let's go, if you look at the higher and higher the cumulants, basically boundary effects becomes more and more important. So, so therefore, these are basically because of this boundary effect, you just divert. But the main point is that basically, if you increase the system size, it becomes uh, closer and closer to the theoretical result. Okay, so one can go in fact beyond Parker selection, and uh, because we have an exact result, and you can go ahead and compute. So this is the Parker selection, and one can see that okay, this is the second order term, and then third order term will be one over sigma t, and so on. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the single tech particle. Now we can take the same, more or less the same calculation and extend it to two tech displacement. So let me just define what is the, what do you mean by two tech displa displacement? I take now two particle, and finally what I look at is I look at the initial position of one particle and final position of the another particle. And this displacement, I looked at it. So for example, in this case, so this right particle goes there. This is the red tech particle. This is the magenta tech particle. So they go there. So red is the one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the sixth particle, and this is the ninth particle. So they are the separate, so basically they are separated by third order. So from the red is one, two, three. So this is given by this. So it's called R equal to three. But in general, you can have a separated by any R. And you can essentially do the same calculation. And you can ask what is the probability distribution of this object. So what you find is this formula. So it's all this blue part is basically essentially same as the formula we have written it down, except that red term basically. So this is only the difference. Okay, so it doesn't change anything. And okay, these are just the same objects basically. And one can find out the large deviation function in this case. And okay, one see that basically this large deviation function is modified by, so this L is basically R, I just scale it with rho sigma t. So it's, again, you can see that one can just find the exact large deviation function for this problem. Okay, so where this theta star is basically the saddle point uh, of the, yeah, saddle point, yeah. So, okay, you compare with simulation and you see that, okay, this is uh, R equal to zero case, so that's what I have done it before. But you can see that, okay, this is different r, and if you will put a finite r, basically this function become, becomes asymmetric, okay? So you can also go ahead and compute this cumulant generating function, and once you compute this cumulant generating function, then you can compute this cumulant. So the first cumulant is the mean. So this is exact to all order, because you know that mean is basically the tech separation divided by the density. So then one of our density is the typical length scale. So this is the mean, but one can basically compute and all cumulants. And for large L, basically one can show that all these cumulants basically goes like L. Okay, yeah. Uh, so now, so, so this is for general dynamics, uh, either diffusive, ballistic, uh, sub-diffusive, uh, anything. But let's just go to a, one particular dynamics, which is just a Hamiltonian dynamic. That's a well-studied problem, uh, studied by Jepson. I think Zoel has studied at some point. So this is this Hamiltonian system. So you want to, people are interested in velocity autocorrelation function. This is the same object, in fact, Harvard had uh, considered in his uh, lectures in the first uh, week. So people are usually interested in this velocity autocorrelation. And for the Hamiltonian system, one can show that this velocity autocorrelation is basically related to the derivative of this two tech displacement object. So, okay, this is something. So, because you saw that how Q is defined, so if you just take two derivatives, it just becomes F. So then one can see that this velocity autocorrelation, this V bar is basically a typical velocity scale. For Gaussian, V bar square is basically the uh, variance, but it's just a typical velocity scale. So, this is exactly given by this one, and to the leading order 
this is the answer. Okay. In fact, this leading an order answer is very easy to understand, unlike this uh, uh, cases where these particles are different masses, so you do all this hydrodynamics. So here it's very easy to understand. So what is going on? So you have this individual particles, so they have all have the same mass, and you choose these initial velocities at random independently. And you are looking at this object, velocity of the 0 at particle at 0 and velocity of the r at particle at time t and this average. So only when we at to the leading order it's going to contribute if this velocity of the zero particle becomes the velocity of the rf particle at time t. So then it, these are two same velocities so it's a v square average. Otherwise it will be just two different velocities and these velocities are independent so when you compute this average some v i v j so that will be just zero. So therefore the r has to be basically equal to rho times v t, v is the velocity and t is the time. Right? So this distance has to be like and in that case basically both the velocities are same so it's just v square and this average now we can compute so it's just okay if you just scale it to the v so it's given by that and you know the distribution of v so which is given by that so if you evaluate so you get this answer. So the leading un order answer is very easy to compute yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know that the mean squared displacement for diffusive motion is. So this is uh, ballistic motion now. Uh, for ballistic motion. Yeah. Oh, but the mean squared displacement for tagged particles. Yeah. Which is, uh, right? No, no. But now I am looking at two tag. Okay. I look at one particle and the another particle. So this is this two tag. The uh, uh, final position of the RF tag particle initial position of the zero at tag particle. So this is the object I'm looking at. And so there, so the uh, mean goes like L, variant goes like this object basically. So this is not the, uh, you're thinking of R equal to zero case basically. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So this is basically the answer. And if you plot, okay, this, this is for the Gaussian. And this is basically equivalent to your these two sound peaks moving away for the uh, hydrodynamic case, which is much more complicated, but here it's much simpler basically. But it's essentially like these two peaks basically they are moving away if I, because if I don't scale it basically it will basically go like t basically. Okay. So in fact this, okay, this object in some form it was not, it is not new. In fact, it was a result by Jepsen. This is the exact form, actually if you just look at this two, this thing, and okay, if you look at this form, you can see much actually what is going on there. And it's a very complicated calculation, at least to me, in fact, and, uh, uh, but in this problem, at least the leading order term, you can actually get a very simple calculation, and in fact, not the leading order term, in fact, this calculation, you can actually compute order by order, and to all order, actually, these calculations are very easy. Okay, so this is uh, by Zepson, and but he didn't have a the simple form for this uh, in the scaling limit. Basically, at least in this paper, I don't know if uh, this form was there in some uh, future papers. I don't know, but uh, I, I have not seen this form before. Okay, okay. So so this is this one, this one. Yeah, so no, I'm just plotting this uh, velocity or correlation function, how it basically behaves uh, as a function of product. So this object versus this one, it's the same object. So I just scale it differently. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, when f is a Gaussian function, basically. No, it's because I scaled it with this, but if I don't scale it, if I just look at the variable r, so r is proportional to t. So the, so if you look at at different times, basically this peak will be at different places. So, so they are just ballistically moving peaks basically at time. Yeah. Yeah. So now, okay, this is result and then, okay, so after that you see that, okay, if you look at Jepson result, so he said, okay, he doesn't give the calculation, but he says, okay, after rather messy calculation, you get this answer. And you in fact take our answer, this object, Okay, so this one, this would be r equal to zero in fact, because I'm now looking at the same tag. So, so if you look at this one, so this is the answer for any f, 
And if you put a Gaussian distribution, you immediately basically re recover this Epsilon answer. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is that, okay, we have some results probably like uh, not there earlier, and some other results which you can recover very easily using this method, yeah. Uh, so to summarize, so we have an exact calculation for a large deviation probability distribution for the position of the tech particle in hard point gas. So we have cumulant generating function and we have computed the cumulant. So we have also looked at these two tech properties. And these results are quite general as long as these are hard point particles. Okay, so for any dynamics, these results are true. So I didn't talk about some earlier work we had been doing. So for example, we also looked at various uh, tech particle correlations for Hamiltonian systems. So these are uh, few papers, and if you are interested in, uh, you can talk or uh, look at this. And the second one is, so in this case, we are interested in a bulk property. So we have an infinite system, and we look at the tech particle in the bulk, and ask what is the large deviation properties of this object. But one can ask if we have a semi-infinite system, and you look at a particle in the front, so this is like the front particle, and you can ask the similar question. Right? What is the large deviation uh, form of the displacement of the front particle? What is the far spaces time to a given point for this far spaces, uh, that particle? And this is some work I did in 2007. And okay, we can, uh, if you're interested, we can uh, talk at some point. Yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for answering some questions. Mm -hmm. So, that means the distribution should be the smaller particle. And alpha should depend on the location of the particle and among the 10. Uh, so, what so happens? Number of particles. No, so initially, what happens? So, uh, initial times it doesn't depend on the location of the particle because it's like a bulk. So, after time, sometimes it sees the boundary, and then what happens basically it just saturates. And depending on the no, system. I'm not saying spatially it can move arbitrarily fast. The number of particles. Ah, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so that is what I was telling on this one. So that is the most extreme case, right? So this is the case where you have this system, and you are looking at the particle, which is so it's something like this. So you have this particle, and so you are looking at the dynamics of this guy, yeah? and you are assuming that this this side basically goes to infinity. Right? So that dynamics is, that pro, uh, distribution for this object, like uh, the statistics of this object is very different from this one. Now what you are asking is probably, okay, not this guy, not somewhere there, but somewhere probably here. Right? So okay, this one probably at some point, initial point, depending on where this particle is there, it will behave like the bulk particle. And after some time, it will basically essentially behave like the front particle. Yeah, but there will be some crossover, I guess. So finite number of uh, if you have a finite number of particles, then okay, it will be uh, yeah, uh, finite correction basically. Yeah, yeah, Kiran. Yeah, yeah Kiran. Thank you for your talk. Uh, there is one thing I could not extract from your paper and even from the earlier ones yeah. from Carger. Yeah. So you're taking the average over initial conditions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fixing the uh, so it's uh, so it's particle you just choose with a density one uh, probability one of our. So I want to emphasize that this is one advantage of MFT. Uh, start with an arbitrary initial condition. You could even fix it, and the large deviation. From yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think I think uh, Anupam had done uh, has done some uh, calculation, and in fact, see because this. System method is very easy, right? So you can in fact fix this initial particle position. So only difference will be they are so only where this difference will come. Let me just write it there. See here I have just put it something to the power n. Mm -hmm. There are n particles on the left, and each particle I'm choosing randomly. But now if I say, that, okay, these particles are on a lattice or something, so this will be basically, this term will be different basically here. So I have to choose, okay, this particle goes from here to the right of this thing, this particle goes from here. So it's, okay, there are complications, it's not. The question is whether it's possible to do that. So I think Anupam has basically yeah. done some calculation, and it's possible to basically uh, extend this to also other initial conditions, yeah. 
another question? Uh, I guess that uh, a long time ago we considered such a system, but uh, there was a certain probability of particles crossing. Uh -huh. They weren't always reflected. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know, you get some, uh, the behavior asymptotically uh, becomes no uh, kind of some uh, two, uh, Langevin type or uh, diffusion processes, but which are uh, correlated. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering whether your message could also apply to the case of whether that particle meets another particle, this probability P gets reflected, and this probability 1 minus P mm -hmm. just crosses. Okay, so we have not done this, but I think it should be possible. Basically, wh what I would do instead of Assuming that this, yeah, so this, uh, okay, so this just, uh, I'm just answering you without much thinking. Uh, but I think it's possible basically what I have to do, like if when I look at this final tech particle, so with some probability it is as if all particles are crossing each other, so that's my non-interacting non picture. And with some probability basically it will be something else, yeah, but I have to, I mean, think more carefully. I cannot just, uh, yeah. But uh, I mean, it should be possible. That's what I feel. I mean, then if you look at two different particles, in your case, it's just a convolution. Yeah, yeah. In the other case, you have two independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The process itself, uh, asymptotically, some rather interaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 maybe it's an interesting problem to look at, actually, yeah. Do you have a question, Stefano? For this nearest neighbor, let's say, the interacting case, the, the large deviation will be very connected to the large deviation of the bulk of the density of the other particles. Uh, so, so if, 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 you, if you know the large deviation for the bulk, for the density, density. of the particle, you can deduce the large deviation of the of the tag particle because this is is uh, mm. this is not the procedure that you followed probably. But no, but yeah, uh, but is it also true? There is, there is there is a paper on this for the symmetry simple exclusion. There is a paper by Seturaman and Varadan. Uh -huh. The tag this, particle. Uh, is, is it this rate function can be connected to, to the one day? Is it true for any dynamics or a diffusive dynamics where you can uh, well, the, write so down some? Well, it's the diffusive dynamics in that yeah. case. So the, the particle moves uh, asymptotically like fractional uh, Brownian motion. Okay. It's a the large deviation okay. of the movement of this tag particle. Okay. Maybe you can tell me later, but yeah. But, uh, like for example, if I have a ballistic particle and they just uh, equal mass, uh, probably it will not be valid, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just if I just say uh, uh, initial particles with uh, random velocities, choose from some distribution independently, and they just move and cross, and all masses are equal. So where there's no hydrodynamic kind of theory, can one use? I'm talking about the diffusive case. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah maybe, yeah, I, yeah, okay, yeah. Natural approach. Okay, yeah, okay, maybe, yeah. Okay, so let's thank Sanjib again. Thanks.